couple of years ago when I was doing videos on some of my training philosophies, in the comments people would mention HST or Hypertrophy Specific Training, a program developed by Brian Haycock, a bodybuilding writer and lifelong lifter. With a Master's in Exercise Physiology and a Bachelor's in Clinical Physiology, Exercise and Sports Science with a minor in Nutrition. So this guy has experience and education in spades and today we are going to break down his program to see if it's something you might want to try or if there are things about his program you might want to incorporate into your training. HST uses full body workouts done three times a week in an eight week program followed by a two week deload before repeating. It has four two-week training blocks. In the first two weeks, the sets are 15 reps. For the next block, it drops to 10 repetitions with the reps continuing to drop down to five. As the reps go down, your weight you're using goes up, providing a fresh training stimulus. The last block before the deload focuses on negatives or drop sets. After I establish a framework of HST, I'll post a sample program. For each training block, we need to know what weight brings us to failure at 15, 10 and 5 reps. The easiest way to do this is to pick a weight you think you can do for only 10 repetitions. Then use this as your test weight, doing as many reps as possible until failure. It doesn't matter if you reach failure exactly at 10 reps, because you'll take the number you did and use a chart to estimate your maxes. Say you hit 8 reps, times this weight by the number on the far right of this chart to give you your estimated 1 rep max then times it by the percentage beside the 5, 10, and 15 repetition number. And that will provide your max weight for each training block. You do this for every exercise in the program. You sure can tell it was designed by a university guy with all this math. A lot of strength programs work off a percentage of one rep max. So really, programming your training this way isn't unusual for an experienced lifter. For exercise selection, there can be an A and B workout. But in the sample workout Brian provides, there's only one exercise that changes from the A to B, and that's squats, alternating with leg press. That doesn't mean you can't alternate other exercises like bench press with dips. For the number of exercises in a workout, you can choose anywhere from four to seven, prioritizing compound movements with at least one exercise for legs, chest, back, and shoulders. Every workout will use a different weight, but the same number of repetitions slowly building up to your maximum over six workouts. For your upper body, each training block starts with a weight that's 25 pounds lighter than your final week's max. Add five pounds each workout until you've reached your maximum on the last workout for the training block. For the lower body, start with a weight that's 50 pounds lighter and add 10 pounds every training session. The first couple of workouts might feel relatively light, which is okay. It gives your joints, tendons, and central nervous system a break. To make these first few workouts more challenging, reduce the tempo of the exercises to a point where you feel like you're going to fail by the last rep. This could be as slow as a six second rep with a three second concentric and eccentric movement. I'll put up the recommendation for warm ups on the screen and you can screenshot them. The final two weeks are negative repetitions. The program has you increasing weight to your two rep max and doing five slow negatives. This would require a couple of training partners and some exercises like squats aren't appropriate to do this way. So they provide another option with drop sets. This whole program has only two working sets for each exercise and the final phase is no different. When using the drop set method, continue with your five rep max on your second set as soon as you finish your fifth repetition, reduce the weight without resting by about 20 or 25% then rep out to technical failure and drop the weight one more time by the same percentage. After this, you should be ready for a deload where the program has you taking a full two weeks off training. This will put you in a slightly deconditioned state, giving the body a little extra shock when you start training again. With HST, they use load or the weight lifted as the primary stimulus for muscle growth. And this is a good thing, but they keep training volume low and volume is also a key driver of muscle growth. To find out how you can better use volume to build new muscle, watch this video next and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.